Elizabeth Taggarty led Appalachia's chapter of the Brotherhood through its very first orders into its darkest hours. With her direct and personal connection to Roger Maxson back in California, she put together a plan to eliminate the Scorch Beasts for good. But fear of the past compelled her and the Brotherhood who followed her into launching a suicide mission into the heart of the beast that cost them everything. Her story starts in a cave on the shore of Spruce Knob Lake. On approach, we can see several warning signs and hanging noise traps. Moving inside, we step on a punji board and a bear trap. On a table in front of the entrance, we can find a note labeled Taggarty's Journal October 21st, 2077. This note was written two days before the bombs fell. Arrived at Appalachia. It's beautiful. Safe. The Thunder's treating the whole thing like an extended field trip. Asked Wilson to knock some sense into them. A favorable performance evaluation could mean choice assignment in upcoming offensive. These war games are being monitored closely. It feels like something big is around the corner. I sympathize with the men, though. It's good to be back in America, and after the games, two-week furlough. De Silva grew up around here. She's offered to show us around the local watering holes, but mission first. So this note brings up a few questions. She says these war games are being monitored closely, suggesting that something big is coming. We know that at this point in the war with China, America was well on its way to victory, with the invention of power armor and the victory in Alaska. So what possibly could be coming? Maybe they knew about the upcoming nuclear war. That may be a stretch though. To our right, we can find another note detailing the war games. To Lieutenant Taggarty. Summary, your unit, now specified as friendly, is ordered to act as U.S. Special Forces deployed behind the lines of an unspecified Chinese province. You are tasked with sabotaging target armored personnel carriers. Secondary objective is to gather Chinese field intelligence. Although stealth is advised and preferred, friendly can achieve objective in any manner. There are two detachments of Marines posing as hostile Chinese forces. For the duration of this operation, Friendly must act on its own initiative. Further details in supplemental booklet. So these must have been their orders. We can find an explosives box underneath a raised sleeping platform. These must have been for the sabotage. Next to their orders, we can find a holotape recording of them in the middle of their operation. We're in the mission boundary, right Weber? Uh, we're at Spruce Knob. Uh, two clicks. We're two clicks from the edge. So we hug the line, move hard, move fast, and we may catch the Marines with their pants down. LT, you may want to listen to this. What is it, Moreno? The comm. The chatter's weird. Let me... No, 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 no. Confirm nuclear strike on New York. Shit. Shit! Oh, God. It's the end. The whole channel's been uh, blocked. I'm not sure how they're doing that. Man, the brass is going all out. Is this part of the war game, Lieutenant? In the event of a nuclear exchange, we are to immediately seek orders from a superior. For the purpose of these war games, however, we are completely on our own, cut off from command. Any standing orders we can fall back on, Lieutenant? None that I know of. Whoa! Did you... There's one over there, too. Mother of... Uh, this isn't no war game. Turn that off! The confusion of that message must have been terrifying. In the middle of a war game, they get confirmation that New York has been hit with nukes, and quickly after that, they assume they feel the earth shake from nukes hitting Appalachia. Because of the notes before the bombs fell, we can assume the squad was inside this natural bunker when the bombs fell, protecting them from any harm. 
On a table opposite of the last recording, we can find another holotape, labeled Radiolog August 29th, 2077. Now before I play this tape, the label on this tape seems to have a mistake. I believe it should say October 29th, 2077, because in the tape, Roger Maxson talks about being labeled a traitor, but the events that led up to Maxson's treason had not yet happened in August 2077. I believe this is a typo, but let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. Here is the tape. Drying band, uh, AH-13. <sighs> Lieutenant, I got something. I can't make anything out. Sorry, working on it. Maxon to Appalachia. Repeat, this is Captain Roger Maxon. Give that to me. Seeking any... Lieutenant Taggarty here. Captain, it's you? Busy. <laughs> Damn, it's good to hear a friendly voice. Captain, I heard... I heard you're a traitor. Traitor? If disobeying unconscionable orders makes you a traitor, then I suppose I am. Lizzie, I, I'm glad you're alive, but I need to find someone in Appalachia. Someone dependable. That's where I am. The Thunder was running war games against some jarheads. So they're still in one piece. My God, Lizzie, this... This is good news. Roger, you're a traitor. I could be court-martialed even talking to you. Lizzie, look around you. The army's gone. America is fallen. I know you have questions, but we need to talk. There are things I learned at... <coughs> Mariposa. I got a scientist with me, Dr. Takano. We'll set up a secure channel. I'll answer all your questions then. Captain. Lizzie. You know me. We need to talk. We'll monitor this band. Taggarty out. So on this tape, we can hear Elizabeth and Roger interact for the first time. Immediately, we can tell they know each other personally, because of the way they refer to each other, Roger calling Elizabeth Lizzie. For being in the military, this is pretty unusual. This suggests that they were at least friends, if not something more. Roger says he found something at Mariposa, leading him to break away from the army. What he found and what he did is for another video, but he ends the tape by encouraging Taggarty to keep in contact. Up on the raised sleeping platform, we can find Taggarty's thoughts on this. The radio chatters of madness and death, and most of all, chaos. Moreno picked up some government transmissions out of Charleston, but no military command. We're supposed to reestablish the chain of command, but after what Maxon said, could our government really be using military prisoners as test subjects? Injecting them with experimental serums like human guinea pigs? I can't believe it. I'm going off book here, but first priority is to survive. Gather supplies, hunker down, and make it through the winter. De Silva says there's a survival training camp northeast of here. Hopefully we can come to some arrangement. The next time a storm hits us, we'll set out. If we do it right, no one will even see us. So in this note, it sounds like she's considering Roger's request. She then talks about a survival training camp. She, of course, is referring to the Vest Camp in the Mire, soon to be known as Camp Venture. I have a whole dedicated video on Camp Venture if you want the whole story. A link will be in the description below and the cards above. It sounds like their squad is heading there next, so, so are we. Northeast of this location, we can find the Vest Survival Camp. After clearing out the Scorched, we can find a holotape labeled Formation of the Brotherhood. This tape is a recording broadcast to all of Appalachia. We can assume Elizabeth Taggarty was listening to this recording live as it was being broadcast. After listening to this, she decided her squad would join the Brotherhood of Steel. Appalachia Online, Captain. I know most of you love America. Good old red, white, and blue. But those of us who served at Mariposa know something. America failed. Not because of its citizens who lived clean lives filled with hardships in a never-ending war. Certainly not because of its fighting men and women. God bless them. No. Its leaders failed us. Senators, generals, presidents, all those bastards. 
Their failure almost destroyed all mankind. But I look around here, and I see survivors. People too stubborn. People too damn ornery to die. We've fought, and we've endured, and we finally have a small patch of safety. But having a home isn't enough. purpose. We cannot look to the America of old for that purpose. We have to build our own. So tonight, as we break bread together, let us forge together something new, something strong, something we can be proud of, something we can build upon. We'll preserve what's best of what's come before us and use it. And one day, we will reclaim what was lost. Let us forge a brotherhood of steel. We know from my Camp Venture video that a new batch of recruits were graduated, making expansion necessary. They decided to expand to the Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, now known as Fort Defiance. There, we can find a tape labeled The Nuclear Option in Taggarty's Quarters, with her plan to eliminate the biggest threat to Appalachia and the Brotherhood, the Scorch Beasts, once and for all. Is this urgent, Lizzie? Elder, I've read Scribe Takano's reports. I've talked with Grant a lot, too. Spit it out. The sonic generators work, but... There are just too many Sierra Bravos. This strategy of ours. It's just delaying the inevitable. You're not giving up on me. No, of course not. But I think we may need something bigger. More final. Go on. One of the squires on patrol found a nuclear silo. Still functional. What? Even you, Lizzie? Are you out of your goddamn mind? Look around! Look at everything! The death, the destruction, the end of the world? That came from the nukes. But if we don't deal with the Bravos once and for all, they could kill everyone, all life on this continent. That's what Takano said, right? There will always be a reason to use a weapon, always. The nukes? Never again. I'd mothball the whole technology if I could. Am I clear? Yes. Elder. I consider this matter resolved. I don't want to talk about it again. Maxon out. So Maxon shuts this plan down, hard. But just because the plan gets shut down doesn't mean the Scorch Beasts are going to stop. On Taggarty's terminal, we can find her questioning his orders. Ultimate solution. Every last Bravo needs to be destroyed. Maxon forbid using nukes, but... A few years back, we found one of the missile silos, and the old security system was formidable. As a last resort, we need to find a way in. Senator Sam Blackwell was on the Nuclear Energy Committee, so he might know something, but no one knows where his bunker is, except maybe Quinn Carter for the Charleston Herald. One way or another, if touchdown fails, the nuclear option may be our only option. Maxon orders be damned. So in this post, she mentions Touchdown. This is her plan to end the Scorch Beasts without the nukes. This plan involves a team going into the caves of the Cranberry Bog to kill the Scorch Beasts for good. The only problem is that this sect of the Brotherhood is desperately undermanned and under arms for this operation. Next to Taggarty's squad photo, we can find the final conversation between Maxon and Taggarty. In this tape, Taggarty is trying to convey how desperate the mission really is. Lizzie. Takano says the satellite's failing. So, this is it. Elder, I'm not ready for this. Can't the scribes do anything about it? No. The infrastructure of the old world is failing. But you are the absolute best second in command I have ever had the pleasure of working with. Now is the time for you to be in charge, Lizzie. I know you're up for it. I know you won't let your men down. Roger, we don't have the men for the mission. The Bravos just keep coming. Then find new men. Think outside the playbook. Elder, you trust the outsiders too readily. They will betray you. You too, Paladin? 
Everyone around me keeps saying shut the world out, only look out for ourselves. Even my goddamn son. But the Brotherhood alone can't rebuild what's lost. We need them. Hell, our whole plan is for them. I'm not thinking about some far-off future, Elder. I'm worried about today. And tomorrow, we're fighting non-stop to keep the Bravos contained. I can't afford a weak link. I trust your judgment. If our scribes find anything new, I'll see if we can get word to you somehow. And Lizzie. After this tape, Taggarty eventually launches Operation Touchdown to eliminate the Scorch Beasts. This heroic mission will be detailed in another video, but even though it was a short-term success, in the end, the Scorch Beasts ended up coming back, leaving you, the Vault Dweller, to activate the nuclear option. Alright guys, that's all I have on Lieutenant Elizabeth Taggarty. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and if you've made it this far in the video, consider joining my channel's membership. You get a cool little cryptid symbol next to your name, when you comment, and it goes a long way in supporting my channel, so thank you. Also consider following me on Twitter, it's the best place for me to keep in contact with you guys. But anyway, this has been Wijin TV. thanks for watching guys.